Broadcasting from the Golden Spread of Texas, this is The Fred Hughes Show. With each episode, we introduce to you an inspiring person or message to help you grow and unlock your potential in life. I'm Fred Hughes, professional photographer, pastor, teacher, author, and your show host. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to this episode brought to you by the Faithful Partners of Decision Ministry. Well, hello there. Welcome to the Fred Hughes Show tonight, and i um, excited that you're here. We just want to um, uh, kind of let everybody know that we uh, didn't quite make it last Thursday night because of uh, somebody who, who just uh, practiced some, what do you call it, stupid... Uh, went outside and worked in the hot sunshine and during the middle of the day and uh, made himself sick. And so <laughs> I had to do a little recuperating because, uh, you know, I keep thinking I have one of these immortal bodies. I love reading about it in, in the Word of God and how wonderful it's, gonna, wonderful it's all going to be. But uh, I keep forgetting I still don't have one of those yet. So, you know, I blew it. I blow it every once in a while. So. Hope you'll hope you don't do such things as that. So, uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of the uh, the uh, best way not to do what <laughs> get your yard and everything taken care of is don't do it in the middle of the day and drink a lot of wit liquids. So I'm having to kind of make up for that a little bit and drink a lot of electrolytes and uh, and get myself put back together again. And uh, so anyway, I. I very rarely ever uh, get into a situation to where I miss a show, but Thursday I missed. Uh, so this is a re re record of uh, that night, and so it'll it'll go into place uh, coming up next next uh, Thursday. I have guests lined up, and so it's going to be excited uh, to go right on. I have, boy, I have some exciting guests lined up in the next couple months. It's uh, Got some really good people, and I think you're going to enjoy the show a lot. Uh, invite your friends. Let them know that we need uh, we need the support of people listening to us, and we need the support of people giving to us. Um, this stuff costs money. It takes time to put together. It, you know, all I can say is the workman's worthy of his hire. And I know there's a billion uh, different things out there that all want money from everybody. So all we can do is just say, if it ministers to you, uh, then bless us with uh, with a little support. And that makes it to where we can continue to do something and grow this thing. We really, really would love to get the podcast to where it's at, at a notch higher than what it is. I uh, would like to really let, raise the, the level and be able to bring some people on and do do some stuff uh, at a little more first class level. Um, Fred doing all the, I'm, I kind of look like a little guy playing a one man band sometimes. I've been uh, doing this stuff yourself all by yourself uh, is not a good idea, but I've able been able to do that. I'm, I'm into my fourth year doing this. So, so I guess I'm, I'm getting better at it, but uh, still, I would like to go, I would love to go that notch higher, but I, without partners uh, given to, to us on some sort of a monthly basis, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. And so we're just asking, and uh, the word says, ask and you receive. And so we're asking you, uh, send us some money and make it, make it just a, um, a regular donation, if you can, because that's what really helps is that steady flow of things. So anyway, we uh, bless you in that and encourage you to to support us. Okay, uh, I have a word tonight that I want to. I want you to turn to Luke chapter ten, and this word is just it, it just kind of comes off of my heart. And that there's an awful lot of things in the world right now that just aren't. I mean, it, 10 years ago, the world looked really, really different. 20 years ago, you can't even recognize the world today compared to then. And 
Uh, it's just amazing to me how our nation, our world can can have gone into darkness the way it it has. And I think part of that is uh, is that you know the end times are getting a little closer. I, th- I believe we are looking at uh, some demonic activity and some things that that indicate to us uh, that that those last days are in play. And several of the things that tell us that the last day are coming. There's two or three little places it says it's going to be in as in the days of Noah or in the days of Sodom or whatever. And it, it tells us that it's going to, that things aren't going to be looking real, real good at, during those very end days. Um, so, you know, we're going to, uh, we're going to be able to carry on and do all, there's going to be some normal life going on, but it's not going to be life what we've managed, imagined in this uh, USA that we've lived in for a number of years. Now I know I have some foreign uh, people that watch too, but uh, several of them live in countries kind of similar to the to the American um, dream. It they've had some prosperity and it's been good countries. Uh, so Australia and uh, Canada and several places that that watch along every once in a while have have experienced some 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 very good times as well so it's not like a bad thing but um there's been a change across the board every everyone would agree this is kind of turning the wrong way right now and what can we do about it or how can we pray and all of that so i just want to talk about it just a few minutes um luke chapter 10 let me just um kind of put it up here for you I'm going to hit and miss just a little bit, but basically this is just to set it up. <clears throat> this is the sending out of the 70 that Jesus had. This is where um, actually whenever he he um, anointed the, he, he called the 12, and then later on he called 70 more. In other words, that means plus the 12 he called 70 more people. So that's 82 people now that's on Jesus's team. And he is equipping them. And in both accounts, it gives a, it gives pretty much a list of all the things that the authority that he has given both the 12 and the 70 uh, to be able to go out and do what, what he's called them to do. So after these days, the Lord appeared uh, appointed also 70 other others um, and sent them two by two before the face of, of um, before his face into each city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers unto the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, money sack, or sandals. Greet the ones that you meet along the road. But whatever uh, house you happen to enter into, first say, peace to this house. <clears throat> and if there's a son of peace that is there, your peace will rest upon it. If not, it will return to you and remain in that house eating and drinking such as they give you for the laborer is worth, worth his, wa- his wages. Do not go from house to house Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as they set before you. Here's here's the command, basically, what they're supposed to be doing. Heal the sick. He says, heal the sick that are there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its street and say, 
the very dust on your on your feet will cling to uh, the very dust of your city which clings to us we will wipe off against you nevertheless know this that the kingdom of god has come near you but i say to you it'll be more tolerable in that day um I say to you that it will become more tolerable in that day for Sodom than that city. <clears throat> now, there's a strange mix going on here that uh, I, you know, I just want to kind of bring it up. And uh, the fact of the matter is that it that it's a little it's a little unique. Um, I think when you look at that text. And and then you keep on reading down through through Luke. Um, it, it it's interesting. It's really really interesting, uh, because he is he's telling these people he's gathering these guys. He's trained these disciples. He's told them exactly what he wants them to go do. In fact, we find out just a little bit later that he tells them actually more than just that one thing. But the key thing is that he wants them to heal the sick, and. Then he wants them to tell them that the kingdom of of God's come near them. Now, the reason that the healing comes, friends, is because they are executing authority over the sickness and disease. And the demonstration of that is for purpose, the purpose of which is to say our this our God that we represent is powerful don't fluff him off don't just assume that you know your god's just as good as his god is or whatever he, he let him you know so they they came not just with a word but with power to go along with it that's a, a huge difference than religion any other religion can't really do that uh, they don't have power unless maybe it's in a cult and they have a little demonic power and it's all fake. Um, what God has, he can't come up with anything new. He can only pervert what exists. And uh, so whatever, uh, Pharaoh's magicians duplicated everything and uh, just made more frogs and more blood, and more, more all the bad stuff that was big, all the plagues. You know, they didn't help the situation at all. They weren't, they weren't true, and uh, and what they they had to do. So anyway, um, I want you to see though that he said it'd be more, it'd be more tolerable for Sodom. The Sodom is 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 a kind of part of this that I want to to look at because I want to bring us into today. You're his disciple. We've been called and we've been appointed and anointed just like the twelve and just like the seventy and later, 120, and beyond that. And so I know some people say all oh, that passed away. All I can say is they need to read the Bible. Um, it didn't. Um, so look, read, understand that there's purpose, what the purpose is, and don't be afraid of anything that God wants to do and and, and or give you. But let me let me point you to verse um, verse ten nine once again. Heal the sick and say. The kingdom of God has come near you. Now, this is a really strong message because a lot of people need to hear that. And if they don't know the word of God, then we share with them the good news of the kingdom of God. And that is that it is good news. that, And, and it demonstrates it by healing their body, um, casting out devils doing things that will set people free um, from what binds them up, what holds them back, what um, 
keeps their mind from working correctly. And so this is important. Um, so the, the key gift that Jesus handed them was, like I said, authority. Look at uh, verse 13. It just kind of starts out with, woe is you. It's talking about those cities that turning back and don't pay attention. Well, listen, everywhere you go and everywhere you pro proclaim the gospel, they're either going to receive you or they're going to reject you. And you just, quite honestly, my brother and sister, you have to shake your feet off and move on. And their situation is not going to improve much. It's uh, God himself is telling, uh, telling them that it's not going to be good for them because to reject him is to reject his protection, to reject his healing, to reject everything that he has for them and, and declare that they are going to uh, take control of their own life and they're going to run it better than God could. Basically, that's what it says. They want to keep some of the stuff that they think is good. Okay? They want to keep their little things that are destroying their body. They want to keep shooting up something or smoking something or, you know, whatever. Getting together with somebody that's not their wife or what? Oh, there's a jillion things out there that that the enemy of your soul wants to come bring you to and put a hook in you so that he can drag you off. That's the picture you really do need to get. Um, you either have the things of God or you have the things of the world. And one scripture says that we need to, that we need to renew. And let's see, wait just a minute. We need to, um, yeah, we need to renew our mind and all that. Let me let me go back. I'll come back to that later. Um, anyway, it's it's really important that we move on and understand that in in this day we can move in authority if we know we have it. If you know how to exercise uh, the authority that God has you, then you the Word says you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's just a matter of you believing that, laying your hands on somebody and asking God to heal them or commanding, actually, the disease to go away. Um, sounds simple, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. <laughs> We've seen it uh, lots and lots of times to, that people have gotten healed. Now, there's always this person on the other, other side of this, receiving or not receiving, uh, doubtful about what your prayers are doing, all, all of that. There's a, there, there's a number of things that can affect. So not everybody, just because we go lay our hands on somebody, doesn't mean that they're all going get, to get well. That's not even the purpose of it. But if they get together with you and agree with you, and they want what God has, they will receive it. So whenever you impart it to them, they will receive what, what they want, what, they, what God's got ready for them. So in, in, the, in these days that we live in, I just want to kind of bring up some things. It's just, it's dark. It says the dark covers the dark. You know, I mean, it, it's dark out there. And the more you look around, the more you see people um, going darker, um, marking themselves up and, and, and getting a, a little bit more dark with everything. And it's, it's acceptable now. I mean, uh, look at movie, just, just, just open up the, the, the YouTube thing and, 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 and Google movies. And you'll find that about 90% of the movies are dark, dark, dark movies. And uh, one, one of the filmmakers that I know, uh, I asked him, you know, why, what, is, what is the money making this film that you can make? And he said, oh, without a doubt, uh, it's slashers. 
And if you make a, there's never been a slasher movie made that didn't make money. Uh, for some reason, like people love to get the heck scared out of this, out of them. And uh, he says it's it just introduces a spirit of fear into their lives, and they have no idea how how absolutely foolish watching that stuff is. Uh, but man, I mean, they will spend hours creating all kinds of weird costume to make those 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 films where some monster gets gets them or some idiotic you know glob and starts killing people or transforming people into zombies or who knows you know all all of this kind of stuff is just just moving dark 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 and moving you into this world of hopelessness world of uh, of reality that we start living in because of the things that are going on in our world because people beginning to think dark and actually doing some of these dark things and you're going to find that ai is going to push us right off the cliff with that all of that <clears throat> it is going to produce the uh, movies and, and media and ways of us to to do things we never dreamed of. And so I'm just telling you, dark is is flooding in. And here's the good news, and that is that you are the light. And there there's something that's this mightier, greater, and way above the darkness. Um, my greatest example, I love to make the example of, you know, how long did it, when you came into the room a while ago and flipped the, the light switch on, how long, I mean, how big a battle was it for light to win over the darkness that was in the room? I mean, was there, I mean, was there some, you, you just had to pause and wait a minute until they got through, you know, warring it out and you kept wondering if, I wonder whether dark is, or light is going to win this battle up there. It didn't, it didn't work that way at all. It, you flip the light on and just that fast, the darkness is gone. Why? Because light always overpowers darkness, no exception, never ever. And it is the truth. It'll set you free. So you have to know that there's something greater that can be living in you, and his name is Jesus. So if you've invited Christ into your life, then the light of Christ is there. No darkness come, can come and overtake you. They might be able to destroy your body, but they can never take your light, your soul. Uh, they can never take that. It, it, it's impossible for them to be able to do that. And so that is the good news of the gospel. And so it's, it's important that we have a message to tell people, especially the folks that have gotten way off into this darkness. We have drugs that, we, you know, my, my age group, we didn't have any. We, we knew that we had some bad stuff, you know, LSD and all kinds of bad stuff by the time, you know, we got there. <clears throat> so it's always been around. But the stuff we had was peanuts compared to what's available now. But I mean, just one try and you're permanently addicted now. It, it, it's instant. So, you know, we used to experiment around a lot of it. And most of us got a little bit, you know, got, got wise enough to know that that's going to hurt us. And we got off of it. But I'm just telling you right now, you, you don't get off of it. One hit, one try, one one exposure, and you're in uh, permanently. And so that's dark. Man, I mean, that is way too dark. And so, you know, and then people begin to, people that you trust, physicians and doctors, and I mean, doctors and lawyers and governments and that sort of thing, people that we ought to be trusting, uh, that they've gotten so dark, they've gotten so um, corrupted within themselves that you can't trust them. You don't have any faith in, in them being able to do the right thing for you. And so it's dark. It's just dark and it's getting darker. 
It doesn't look like it's going to get any a whole lot better. So we have to pray. We have to keep vigilant to to be doing the things that we want that we want to happen. Um, I'm just telling you, um, Gideon took 300 men and and conquered a huge army. You know, I mean, it, with God, anything is possible. We can we we can wipe it out in a in a heartbeat if that was if that's if it's you know what God wants to do, that He's quite capable of doing that. But in these days, I'm just telling you that we we need to fight the fight. We need to stand our ground. We need to represent the kingdom of of light and not the kingdom of darkness. And we need to speak to these people. And I'm and I'm going to hit the LGBTQ or whatever plus group in that. You really need to understand it, that darkness is is a darkness level of 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 those cities called Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, those were indicators of <clears throat> of, of a position that you can actually reach. Uh, I'll take you over to Romans uh, one twenty eight. Romans one twenty eight. I'm not going to put that up on the screen. I'll just read it to you. It just says, even they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Wow. How many, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that really don't, they know about God, but they don't really want to think about God. They want to push him aside. They want to say, get out of here. I want to go have my mad, wonderful sex and and do drugs and do all. I, I want to have my party. I'm I'm still young. I want to I want to sow some oats, man. I want to I want to do what you know all my friends are doing. This sort of thing. Well, let me just say, when you shove God away, that means He can't help you. <laughs> I mean, if you stiff arm God, um, how do you expect Him to come to your rescue? When you hit the bottom. You wind up in the sewer, the gutter. You wind up dead, broken, and sick, and completely rejected by everybody. I'm telling you, it happens way too often. And whenever you've stiff-armed God like that, he, you don't allow Him to help you, and so. Let me let me move on to this next part. There was a little comma right there. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, comma, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now, who gave it to them? God did. Uh, let me just, and you say, well, why would he do that? Well, he didn't make the choice. You did. Um, why would he give you a reprobate mind? Here's why. Uh, the script, another place in the scripture, it says that you can't, you actually, he gave you over to that kind of a mind so that you could do this. A normal human being is not, their mind isn't so perverted that they would actually dishonor their own bodies and, di and, and do these horrible things that human beings can do uh, whenever God turns them over to their thinking. Um, it Basically, it opens them up to where the, the demonic can come in and begin to pervert them. It one place it says turn them over to the tortures. Uh, other uh, an interpretation of that is turn them over to the demon. Um, that's that that's heavy duty, man. And, you know, but I, I watch about three or four of those uh, crazy movies that are on TV. You know, jillions of them, uh, where all these evil things are flying around and. You know, you got weird people that, I mean, 
just watch a couple of them and you, you kind of get the hang of it. There, there's, it takes a perverted mind to begin to think of all the different ways to just kill people, uh, to think about the, the people that go out and steal children from other people and then take them to um, uh, crack houses and dope them up and then sell their body seven or eight or nine times a day uh, for 10 years. And, um, and then when they get so used up, they start slicing them up and taking body parts out and selling that. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't think that way. If you have a, a, a genuine, honest human being mind, you cannot think that perverted. You have to be given over to that. And so that's basically what it's saying is that if, if you choose, the example is kind of connected to the LGBTQ community. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I didn't write this. God wrote it down. He, you can check it out yourself. I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just saying that this is what can happen. And that leads to other things. Um, it, it just, it leads to the place to where, you know, your, your, your thinking is not correct. So the scriptures basically says, be, um, don't be conformed to the world or, or mashed into their mold, but be ye transformed. That made kind of like more metamorphosized into like a butterfly, you know, into something completely uh, a new being. And that's what, that's, that's the difference between uh, being conformed and, and having your mind conformed to the thinking of the world and being transformed into what they want to build you with, what you're given over to if you proceed down that road far enough, rather than being recreated a new generation uh, by Christ Jesus made to be in his image and to live with him eternally and to be glorified in, an, in, an, in enormous ways. Um, it's not a fairy tale, folks. It's the truth. And the battle is real. The deal is real. Uh, no human being was designed to go to hell. It's too horrible. It absolutely was not meant for any human being to ever wind up there. It is absolutely so horrible that n nobody wants to be there. Nobody wants to be there. And people that think that's where they want to go or that's where they, they are, let me just tell you, you, you need to renew your mind and bring yourself to some better understanding because it's not the truth. Whatever you think, it's not smart. So anyway, uh, let me bring this kind of in for a landing before too long here. Um, it, the option is this. You can either have a mind that is given over to the perversion of this world or you can have a mind that is renewed and, and tapped into God Almighty and have the mind of Christ. Now, honestly and truly, do you want to have access to the mind of Christ or access to perverted, to, to perversion and uh, a reprobate mind? I, it's your call. It's absolutely you're privileged to make that choice. Um, one place it says, she's choose life uh, and life more abundant. And um, it says, choose you this day, either life or death. Uh, blessings or curses. <laughs> you know? 
So, <laughs> but uh, we recommend that you choose life. And so, you know, with God's strong recommend recommendation, choose life, choose life abundant, life eternal, life with God, rather than separated from him and join and thrown together with people, with, with beings that were designed, um, that that place was created to put them in because they deserve to be there. Um, but all humans that don't make the choice to be with him will join them. It, it, it true, you know, I know hellfire and brimstone isn't really popular today. Um, but it's nevertheless just as real as it's ever been, just as true as it's ever been. And um, I just tell you, with all of the new things, it's not going to get easier to make that transition. It's going to get harder. It's going to get more difficult. It's going to be uh, tougher to make that. I know a lot of people want to wait to the last bitter end and get a little quick change over and maybe some of you'll pull it off, but I'm just telling you, that ain't likely because the liar is going to keep telling you lies and convincing you to stay just a little longer. Stay, just, just go a little farther. It's okay. It'll cost you a little more, but it'd probably be worth it. And <laughs> I'm just telling you, they're telling you lie after lie after lie after lie, all of it's lies. And if you keep following it, that direction, uh, you're going to wind up missing out on the opportunity of making the decision that's the most important decision, the most important uh, call that you can possibly make in the world uh, is to be a follower of Christ. And then later on to be filled with his spirit and equipped to be um, empowered even more. So, Wow. All I can say is that there's a clear choice, and I'm going to tell you that in the days to come, dark is going to get darker and light is going to get lighter. There is going to be a great contrast between the two, and it's going to remain that time that way until Jesus comes back, and then he's going to take the restrainer out of the earth. Let me... Um, Peter, uh, Second Peter two four, uh, it it says, uh, you know that the that the the angels that went against Christ, uh, he took them out. Um, don't think that he won't take you out. Um, he created them. He created you. Uh, but anyone that does not go does does not choose uh, him. Then you don't have him. Uh, simple as that. It's choose, choose him, choose life. And um, it doesn't matter whether you're an angel or a demon or a whatever gender you are or whatever color you are. It, it really doesn't make a a bit of difference. You're you're a human being. You got an earth suit right now, and as long as you have that earth suit, you have the choice. The minute you lose that earth suit, you no longer have that choice. Don't think that uh, some little granny, if you go down and, you know, if you can get somebody to go down and pay a bunch of money to to a church or a, or a priest or some someplace that they can, you know, pray you back into the spirit or embalm you and, and uh, I, you know, men, have, men, men have don't tried to do all kinds of things to... Uh, to bring the immortality back. But I'm just telling you that once you're born again, you are already immortal. And in fact, once you got born of the flesh, you are immortal. You're going to live forever. Okay? You're going to live forever. Every single person out there is going to live forever. <clears throat> Like some old real estate friend of mine says, the big deal is location, location, location. I'm just telling you, that's really good advice. Uh, consider your location uh, concerning your decision. 
So I just want to encourage you and encourage people around you that uh, good things are in are in fa- in in the wind for the body of Christ uh, as we grow in Christ, as we encourage one another in Christ. We will see that the days approaching for His return, and so much more as we know that that day is approaching. Uh, we can just get more excited about it. But as long as we still have opportunity to be here, we want to continue to proclaim this good news because every single person out there that's deceived, you know, that's the trouble with deception. It's so deceiving. (laughs) But they're either deceived or or they just been turned over that reprobate mind and can't really think clear anymore. They've been told flat out lies. Uh, they've been hurt by somebody, and they blame God for for something that God actually didn't really do. Uh, there's evil in this world, and evil comes and attacks and 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 loves to um, hurt and defame. And I mean, he love he loves to take the innocent and 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 pervert it and and destroy it. Uh, John 10, 10 just says, the enemy, your enemy, he is your enemy. Don't you think he's not? Your enemy. He comes to steal. He wants to steal everything you have. He comes to kill. He wants to take you off the planet, dude. I, I don't care who you are, how great a candidate for hell you think you are. Uh, he wants to take you off the planet. That's one of his objectives. He wants to get you out of that earth suit because he knows you have authority as long as you're in it. Authority over him. And once he gets once he gets you off off the planet without making the right choice, he owns you. It he just he just tricked you into joining him. For eternity. Like I said, you're immortal. You're going to live forever. But location, location, location. Steal, kill, and destroy. And I didn't quite understand the destroy part, but one day I kind of got a revelation on that. I mean, if you've, if he's already stole everything you have and he wants to kill you and get you off the planet, what's this destroy thing? It means that it wants to take everything that you produced in your life and turn it to nothing, to turn it into as though you never existed so that you have, would have an zero influence on anybody. So if he could take you completely out of the picture, take all remembrance away of you and turn people against even the thought of you, that would be his highest goal, man. Um, make you zero. So, this, you know, that's pretty deep hate. It really is. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I know this kind of been a downer, but I, sometimes we just really do need to think of this and understand that there is this battle in this earth that's going on and we need to begin to tell people that there's good news out there. And that's what I want you to live leave with tonight. Not that it's all bad and gloom and doom forever, because no, remember the light switch thing. You're the light and the one that lives in you, the, the scripture says, greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the earth. And so we both, you know, we live in, on this earth, but we don't live, we're not part of it. Uh, we're actually capable residents of another kingdom. But you've got to join the kingdom and, and be part of it in order to participate in it. Uh, you know, if you, can, you run over to Sweden and say, I want to be a Swede. I just want, you know, hi, uh, I'm Swedish now. Um, I like this. I like this group. They're going to say, "Well, that's wonderful. We thank you. We appreciate you liking us and all that." But <laughs> you're not going to get in until you 
prove yourself just a little bit here and line up with a few things and everything. Right now, our, the USA is the only place in the world I know of that you can just kind of boom in here and say, I'm here and, um, and be pretty much okay with calling yourself whatever you want to call yourself. So I, there, there's some limits and, um, you know, we need to understand that the world's going to get darker. Our, our, we're going to be more and more limited, but we're going to have to take a uh, rise up and shine brighter and brighter and brighter. And our end is good. Uh, we are going to, I mean, there's, there's examples in the story in the, in the, um, Bible all over the place about the land of Goshen, uh, the, 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 Israelis being delivered and, and set free and from the army that it was overtaking them. There's all kinds of rescue. There's all kinds of examples of salvation. There's all kinds of, of places where God intervenes in them in behalf of men and brings them back up into his presence and, and, and embraces his children. So, I'm telling you, we have a bright, wonderful future in front of us. The battle right now is for those who should be with us that are not. So we love them so much that we want to tell them, this is dark. We have light. Come and follow us. Come and look at the light. Come and see this light. You're going to love it. And that's that's our purpose. I mean, we... We have a mission. We have um, a message to tell the world that's really super important, and that is that Jesus has answers for you. We and, and we need to be happy about that message, and we need to be really excited about those that receive our message, and uh, that should be our excitement. That should be our our goal in life, that should be our motivation <laughs> to just to just be uh, continuously looking for opportunities to serve God and to to help people make those choices and miss hell and make heaven. Amen. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed this. It, I, I know I'm, 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 that, that's kind of a weird word, enjoy, um, but it's nevertheless the truth and it's powerful truth that we need to think through. We need to understand this. Are, these are dark days and this is a time. This is not, you know, uh, life on the on the uh, easy side of the street. It's, it's, we're going into warfare. There's going to be you know, some losses and some gains. There's going to be some battles won and there's going to be some battles taken. And so I'm just telling you, think of yourself more of a warrior and, and an evangelist um, and a proclaimer of Christ than anything else today. These, this is the new place that we Americans need to be standing and we need to say we are the hope of the world. Our nation is critical that we don't lose it because the uh, um, the restrainer, uh, whenever it gets taken out, it's over. Once and the restrainer is the Holy Spirit, and, and as long as the Holy Spirit has us to operate in, then He's here and He's able to kind of. Do the, he'll he'll be here anyway, but it'll just be in a, a different format and different uh, placement, and more difficult than what it is before. So right now is not easy, but it's not as difficult as it's going to get. And so we need to take advantage of doing everything we can, because that day is coming. That day is coming. Well, Father, I just pray over everybody's listening that they would be encouraged, not not depressed, not not scared or worried, but just give them eyes to see what's going on in the world around them, and to know that these are 
dangerous, perilous, important days. And we need to be doing the right thing with them. And we need to be listening to your voice and hearing what it is that you want us to accomplish day by day so that this country can be restored and that there would be a, a beacon of freedom and light that will remain in, in the world. Okay, As America goes, so does the rest of the world. But we're losing that influence, and it's getting weaker. We're having less and less of that influence. But I'm just telling you, we still have enough if we don't be silly and lose it. So change your thinking. Renew your thinking. Do you know what changing your mind actually means? Repent. It means to turn away from what you're doing, how you've been thinking, and think a new thought. Well, the Word of God gives you the new thoughts, gives you the plan, gives you the ability to hear the voice, and the Holy Spirit comes right in with it and interprets it and clarifies it and personalizes it for you. So get born again, get filled with the Spirit, and, and trust God. He's with you. He's going to take you over, not under. He's going to make you more than a conqueror. He's going to bring you good things. He leads you to the victory. Absolutely, he will lead you to the victory he wants you to walk into. God bless you. Amen. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure and get the download and the uh, show notes that we have available for you. If you agree that this is place to be, invite your friends. Use those little buttons to uh, connect us to your Facebook friends and others. And if you have not subscribed, do it today. Check out our free downloads. This is the Fred Hughes Show signing off.